Hello everyone and welcome to another Steel Division deck deep dive. And today we look on an Allied Division again at a Soviet Division. Or not quite Soviet, as it's a the Estonian Divisions, but a lot of Soviet equipment. The 7th SD Laskur Divis, and I butchered that, hopefully not too much. And it's a pretty funny one. It's a division that I enjoyed a lot lately. And it has some weaknesses, but thanks to some patches lately, it has become for sure a good bit better. And it has some really cool stuff in it. So we will go through it tap by tap once more, and then talk in the end about the general strategy for the deck and so on. So let's start in Recon, as always, where you got your female sniper teams. The, one of the reasons for the name. And you get three cards of them. I decided to only use two. 12 snipers is already pretty good. They come with free veterancy. So that's pretty nice. They do good damage. And I really enjoy the sniper teams here. Especially combined with your beefy infantry units. They can be pretty nice for good infantry pushes. The other infantry units here are not that amazing. The Ratsulur. 11 man squadron, yeah, but availability is okay as well, but not great. And you just don't get the damage power, the firepower, the Lure, also not that great. And the two man, yeah, can be helpful. Gonzo uses them a lot, for example, but I think snipers are more important. T70 can be decent as well, though I sided against it, it in here because you got already enough light tanks. Infantry, you get some cool unique units in the form of the Mustad Mantlid. The other ones are mostly renamed units of so uh, like versions of Soviet units with Estonian names. The Mustad have good secrecy firepower with 4 MPs compared to normal squadrons and 15 hit points for 20 points is pretty nice for that man spam, especially with the availability they come with. So they come with 18 and 27 availability, so you can really Bring out a lot of these throughout the game, and they are your meat shield basically. And if they get into CQC, they can deal with no normal infantry units for sure, and also deal somewhat damage to other SMG squadrons. Though MP40 is obviously not the best for this. Then I take a leader here, a three man leader. Four availability is the reason why. 20 points is nice as well. So together with the sniper leader that you get in B. Costs you 30 points, a bit ex expensive, but together they give you 10 leaders, which is enough for this infantry loadout. And then one card of Let's Kurit in A, one with DPs, which are basically your Strelke DPs. And they are pretty decent, PDRD, DPs, 12-man squadron, two DPs helping out a lot. 1 in A, 1 in B. And then the Lakurit SVT, which are your Strelke SVT. And since the buff, these are really good again. 11-man uh, squadron with 9 SVTs for 20 points is really good on the mid-range. Everything below 500 meters. You deal a good amount of damage with these for 20 points. So combining these with the Mustad, which tank for them in front of them, they really do a good job. And then one card of Pioneers for the TNT. You also get some Tanko uh, Nikis basically, but um, and some Automachiki, but I'm not the biggest fan of these. Maybe you could use the second card of TNT as well, but I just like the mass amount of standard infantry here. Though maybe the second card of Pioneers could be pretty helpful in B phase as well, if you want to change something in this infantry tab. In the tank tab, you get a lot of unique units, um, but you only got one card for each. As you can see, they got the leftovers, basically, of the Soviet army in equipment. They got some T-34-76, some KV-1s, which are pretty good. Really helpful, the KV-1s here in this division. And then T-26s and Churchill and Bs. Churchill's also really good with the 6-pounder, high rate of fire. Though pretty slow, T-26s here for the spam. 18 of them with one star urgency is really good. And then one leader tank as well. You have to decide between these two, I think. 
the T36 is not worthwhile. Well. It would have more availability, it would maybe be, but KV or T34 is the option. So maybe you want to get even not use these. As it's a three cost slot, would open you other options, but I use one of these. Support is pretty standard. I'm not using a commander in here because I usually just want to spam stuff in the Maverick deck and overrun the enemy. Flamethrowers and Maxim for the start. We have a lot of good firepower. Maxim comes with veterancy. And then one card of Studebaker for my artillery and so on in B phase. Pretty standard infantry uh, support type. Nothing special here. You get Smash, you get the 800 meter, 80 millimeter mortar. Uh, 15 minutes of mortar, which are pretty good, but I'm not that good with them. In the anti tank tab, you sadly don't get cis 2s, you only get one card of cis 3s. And this is really the issue here. You, your tank destroyers obviously are nice, but you would like to have one more medium size AT. Not the biggest fan of the M42s, um, though, and I really like the SU 76s, so I use these instead for the push power as. With this deck, I always try to be aggressive. In general, you can see dealing with heavy armor is a bit of a problem. Like, the only thing with high penetration power is the SU85 in here. Other than that, it stops at 115 mm of penetration here with the Churchills. 135 penetration with the APCR here. Or here, 105 mm. So, heavy armor decks is really something you don't want to play against. But against mid armored stuff, you can really deal with it pretty well with your tank and anti-tank options. Anti-air is pretty standard as well. The 37mm do their job well. One star veteran C, so they do a lot more damage. Veteran C on AA, really important. You always want to take them with veteran C, especially as the curve is also decent. Artillery, I still trying out the 120mm mortar since they got more ammunition. It's pretty good. And the F-22 is your counter battery stuff if the enemy wants to artillery spam you. And then the Andrew Husha and the off-map to allow you to break through positions if the enemy has entrenched themselves in B-Face and you really need that last push. The Andrew Husha and the off-map can give that to you. The air tap, also pretty interesting. Boston Recon Planes, you see stuff. As I don't like the SU-2 Rocket 1 too much, it's a bit expensive and the availability is not that great. The A-20... Is pretty fast. Medium resilience is a bit of an issue. If it would have better resilience, I would like it even more. But you get good fighters here as well with the X sevens and especially the LA fives. And then two heavy bombers, the Year two with twenty one kilogram bombs, and then the insane Year two with three one thousand kilogram bombs. But you kind of need air superiority here. It's a bit of a meme. Um, I guess you rather want to do it like this, actually. Um, and have a cluster IL-2 to help you out with enemy tanks, especially heavier versions. The 1000 kilogram bombs obviously can also delete tanks, but they are also a bit slower, so I guess this is the way you want to play. And yeah, the general way of playing this is basically really, it's a Soviet kind of Korig, in that you just want to spam your stuff out and, and support it with your light and medium tanks throughout the game, give it a bit of artillery support. The air support is decent, but it's all about the infantry fights, basically, supported by tanks. And you can take a lot of efficient fights with this deck, but as I said, heavy armor is an issue, so you really want to avoid them. And if you play this in the tournament, never first pick it, I would say. It's it's a solid counter pick, maybe, after some bans and so on, with the current buffs it received. But in general, a decent Maverick division. My ass can put a lot of pressure on the enemy with the Mustads and the SVT infantry. And then the KVs and T36s can just overwhelm the enemy as well. KV1 pretty good against other medium tanks. T26 good against anyone with not enough cost efficient AT. So, and the two off maps also really help out getting those last couple of flags to receive the 15 or 9 or maybe even the 18.6 in B phase. So, big fan there. As I said, it's not the most fancy division, but it's a pretty good one, and I enjoy it a lot, and I hope you do too. If you uh, like the division, let me know down below what you think about it, what you maybe would be doing different in this deck, and yep, see you next time. Bye-bye.